Hi, I'm Laurel, and in this video, we will be constructing a decision tree from an information system using the Gini index to determine the splitting attributes. Let's work this problem together. This system consists of tuples x1 through x8 and contains attributes m, n, q, and the decision feature r. The system contains eight records x1 through x8. Attribute m can be m1 or m2. The domain of attribute n is n1, n2, or n3. Like attribute n, attribute q can be q1, q2, or q3. Lastly, the decision feature can be r1 or r2. In order to begin constructing our tree, we need to determine which attributes to split the table on. There are many methods for determining these splitting attributes. In this example, we will be using the Gini index. One definition for the Gini index is the expected error rate of the system. To calculate this, determine the probability of getting each distinct value of the decision attribute. For example, value R1 appears in 3 out of 8 tuples. Its probability is 3 times out of 8. Next, we calculate the probability of value R2. R2 appears more often in 5 out of 8 tuples. After calculating the probabilities for each different value of the decision feature, multiply them to determine the Gini value for the system. In this system, the value is 15 over 64, or 0.234375. I like to use decimals with more complex fractions. Now that we have calculated the Gini value for the system as a whole, we calculate it for each individual attribute. This is used to determine the splitting attributes. To determine the Gini of M, first we find the probability of a particular M value. Let's start with M1. M1 appears four times out of eight tuples, which can be reduced to provide a probability of one half. Next, multiply that times the probability of M1 sharing a record with each value of R. First, M1 and R1 are never in the same tuple, so the probability of them being together is zero out of four, or just zero. Now we look at the connection between M1 and R2. M1 and R2 are always together, so the probability of M1 and R2 being connected is 4 out of 4, or 1. Multiply 0 and 1, then multiply that times 1 half for the probability of M1. This number is then added to M2. The value for M2 is calculated exactly the same way. M2 appears in 50% or one half of the tuples. Next, begin looking at how M2 relates to R1 and R2. Multiply one half times the quotient of the probability of M2 being connected with R1 and R2. R1 is paired with M2 in three out of four tuples. And multiply that times the number of times M2 is paired with R2 which appears in one out of four tuples. The total Gini value for attribute M is three over 32, or 0 0.09375. After calculating the Gini value of attribute M, move on to attribute N. As you can see in this system, N1 appears in two out of eight, or one out of four tuples. Multiply that times the probability of N1 being paired with R1 and R2. N1 and R1 never appear in the same tuple. As there are only two values for R, N1 is always paired with R2. Now, repeat these steps with N2 and N3 and add the parts of the equation together. N2 appears in three out of eight tuples, It appears with R1 one out of three times, and with R2 two out of three times. Like N2, N3 appears three out of eight times. It is paired with R1 two out of three times, 
and with R2 one out of three times. After working it out, the Gini value for attribute n is 1 over 6, or 0 0.16667. After completing the equation for n, we move on to calculating the Gini value for q. Since the calculation used for q is the same as the one used for m and n, I will be speeding up a bit. If you would like, this is a good place to pause the video and work out the Gini value of Q yourself. After working it all out, the Gini value of Q is 1 over 6, the same as the Gini value of N. After working out the Gini values for each attribute, the next step is to calculate the gain. The gain is what we use to determine the splitting attribute. To calculate the gain for M, we use the Gini calculation for the entire system. Earlier, we calculated that to be 0.234375. Next, we need the Gini value of M. The value of M is 0 0.09375. Now, subtract the value of M from the value of the system as a whole. The gain of M is 0 0.140625. We do the same process again to calculate the gain of N. Take the Gini value for the system and the Gini value for N. Find the difference between the value of the system and the value of n, which is the gain for n, which in this case is 0 0.067705. We use the same method to calculate the gain for q. I'm going to speed up for this next part. Now that we have calculated the gains for each attribute, we can compare them. We use the attribute with the largest gain as the splitting attribute in our decision tree. Now we can use M as our splitting attribute in constructing our decision tree. M can be M1 or M2, so our tree has two branches. Let's take a look at our original table. Rows X1, X4, X6, and X8 contain M1. Notice that the decision feature in all four rows is R2. We can use this to construct our first rule. Our first rule is M1 implies R2. It has a support of 4 and a confidence of 100%. So, branch M1 leads to R2. Now we can start working with M2. Tuples X2, X3, X5, and X7 contain M2. Let's separate those out into a separate table. Unlike M1, M2 can imply R1 or R2. To continue building our tree, we need to look at the N and Q attributes. We determine the second splitting attribute the same way as we determined the first one. Calculate the Gini value for the new table. Start by determining the probability of R1. It appears in three out of four tuples. After that, we look at the probability of R2. It appears in one out of four tuples. Multiply the two to determine the Gini value for this part of the system. Now, we calculate the Gini value of the two remaining attributes with the equation we used earlier. Like we did earlier, start with the probability of N1 which is 1 over 4, and multiply that times the probability that R1 and R2 will appear in the same tuple as N1. We repeat this for N2. Lastly, we add the values for N1 and N2 to the value for N3.
After completing the calculation, the Gini value of n for this part of the system is zero. Gini can be interpreted as the expected error rate. Because in this subtable, n has a Gini value of zero, this means that for each value of n, there is only one possible value of r. We calculate the Gini value of q in exactly the same manner as we used for n. I'm going to speed through this part. Just like with n earlier, the Gini value of q is zero. The next step is to calculate the gain for n and q. We repeat the same steps as we used earlier to calculate the gain. Use a Gini value of 0 0.1875 and zero for the value of n. The gain of n is 0 0.1875. Repeat these steps to calculate the gain for q. Because the gains of n and q are equal, they would work equally well as the splitting attribute. For this example, I'm going to create the trees and rules for both n and q. Let's start with splitting on n. n1 only appears in one tuple, x5. This shows that n1 implies r2. Now we can create the rule. Remember, that because the subtable we have been working from is part of the M2 branch of our tree, all rules generated must include M2 on the left-hand side. M2 and N1 imply R2 has a support of 1 and a confidence of 100%. We can move on to creating rules with N2. Tuple X3 shows that N2 implies R1. We write the rule as M2 and N2 imply R1. This rule has a support of 1 and a confidence of 100%. Lastly, we look at the rules we can make with N3. In both tuples, N3 implies R1. We write this last rule as M2 and N3 imply R1. It has a support of 2 and a confidence of 100%. Now we can add this information to the tree. Split n has three branches. n1, which implies r2, n2, which implies r1, and n3, which implies r1. This finishes out our tree. And here are the rules generated, using m as our first splitting attribute, and n as our second. We use exactly the same procedure to generate the tree and rules when we split on q. Like we did earlier, I'm going to speed up when doing the steps for Q. You may want to pause the video here and generate the tree and rules yourself. Here is the completed tree with M as the first splitting attribute and Q as the second splitting attribute. And these are the rules generated with splits on M and on Q. So to conclude, here's one last look at the tree for N and a look at the tree for Q. I hope you enjoyed my video. Thank you for watching and please check out my channel for other algorithm videos.